Okay, so um, this this lesson we're going to talk about mineral dissolution uh, mineral dissolution precipitation in one dimension, like one D columns. So this is different from the previous lessons that we had b before on mineral dissolution precipitation, which was in batch reactor well mixed system. So there's really no dimension, or you can call it a zero dimension. Um, because it's in every spatial point, they are the same. So here we are talking about 1D. What that mean is that um, essentially you have a column, right? So um, we're talking about processes like, for example, rainfall comes in, hitting plant rock, and things dissolving out. And then over a long period of time, it uh, these chemical species release out and rock becomes soil. So I'm going to use this as one example to uh, talk about mineral dissolution precipitation in 1D columns and how we set up these equations. But it's not really only about chemical weathering. It's really about uh, these mineral dissolution precipitation reaction in general. Um, in the short term, these reactions actually change, for example, water chemistry. If you think about the groundwater system, it actually tends to, you know, we can see the change if there's mineral dissolution precipitation happen pretty fast. But in order to see change in soil, in, in the solid phase, we do need to wait a bit longer for enough change to happen. So um, today I'm going to use this uh, system. So I talk about this, uh, if we're thinking about rock transformation to become soil, we're setting up a system has, that has rainfall comes in at a rate maybe, for example, some rate that is uh, about annual precipitation minus ET, something like that at this um, flow velocity and forcing a Usually we would have unsaturated system in this uh, like topsoil, but for simplicity, we would just think, think about everything at the fully saturated system. Um, so it's easy at, at the beginning. So we have this system that have uh, essentially two minerals as pen rock, right? For um, one is quartz and dissolve pretty slowly. Everyone knows about that. Um, the other is K feldspar. Which is a very common silicate in um, in rocks. K feldspar has a um, formula of K A L S I and then O three eight. So essentially, you can think about this system. If you think about rainfall comes in, thing dissolving out. Um, and then release um, the chemical species. That we can think about several processes that's happening at the same time. One is advection. Right? So this is the same advection we talk about in one unit set with a chaser. Essentially, the flow brings out the chemicals, um, but also the d dispersion, diffusion. This again is the same as what we talked about last time um, in the AD equations. But then the last one that is different from the previous one are the reaction, which is mineral dissolution precipitation reaction. So essentially this is like combining uh, the AD equation unit with the uh, uh, mineral dissolution precipitation reaction units. So if you need to go back, you're welcome to look at, review this material. But essentially this, because these three different processes happening at the same time, but then we also have multiple mineral, we know that quartz is all pretty slowly. And we can more or less think about this is almost non-reactive. Uh, because compared to K feldspar, it's a relatively very slow re reaction. Um, so we, and when we think about the reaction that's happening, the K feldspar will be dissolving out. Um, so you have you would have this K feldspar, let's say, dissolving out to become release calcium, which is very important to nutrients, uh, metals, uh, cations, and then it will be also released out aluminum. aluminum. 
plus SiO2. So that's the aqueous, right? Uh, these are species that are going to be coming out. But at the same time, you also think about these, some of these uh, chemical species, when it reach certain level, actually they can precipitate out as solid phase again. For example, aluminum plus SiO2 actually will become another um, mineral, which is we call kaolinite. So essentially, it will have the formula of AIAL2, Si2, O5, OH4. This is kaolinite. This is one, very, one type of very common clay in our system. Or if you go digging some soil, you will very easily see this type of um, clay. So essentially, you can think about the whole process is like uh, we, you have pattern bad luck. Um, rainfall comes in, releases uh, some of the chemical species. Um, but then some of the species also re-precipitate out. So it's almost like a redistribution of, of mineral. But at the same time, because some of species dissolving out over a long period of time, it will change the property uh, of the system, for example, porosity, permeability, make this solid phase more permeable and have more, have more pore space for water to flow through. So there's a change in property as well. Um, in physical property as well. So one question we often ask is, um, how does, how does, uh, what, how does this um, water and rock change over time and also over space? Right, we want to know how how far things change and how much they change and what they have become. And in order to and a lot of time we want to be able to predict that. So in order to do that, we will have to kind of set up the the equations, reactions, and all that, putting everything together and think about how we solve them. So again, with the system, every time we need to think about the chemical system and how they evolve over time and space which we think about. The first thing we need to think about the chemical species first, right? So you have several uh, primary species. Again, if you think about, if you review back some of the material we covered before, we have primary species, and in this system, we because we have a aluminum, silica, that they have to be there, right? This has to be part of the building block of system. You have potassium too, and the, when the rainfall comes, rainfall comes in. Usually, it brings some acidity, so the H plus should be there. Um, you would also have CO two AQ, right? Um, in addition, a lot of times these rainfalls have um, a little bit of salts in it. So, uh, to be representative, we also put in a bit of sodium chloride in that example. Sodium chloride is part of the um, rainfall. Um, that means also in the secondary species, so we need to decide, okay, what complexes that will be formed, um, how much the, how much complexity reaction happened, and things like this. So um, to keep it simple, I'm going to just have uh, potassium and then HCO3 AQ and maybe KCL AQ as two complexes. And then, of course, we also need other uh, species, for example, H minus. We need the other form of bicarbonate and carbonate, right? So it's quickly become a, a long list of species. Um, so these, so you, if we are targeting these chemical species, we'll be essentially solving for uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven primary species. So that it is essentially mean we would have seven independent equations to solve for. So what I'm writing here is um, a general um, type of governing equation for one species I. 
And again, this first term is we call mass accumulation term that we discussed before, right? Um, is the summation of overall change, and then you have the advection term, diffusion term, or dispersion term. This doesn't change because of the system, because, um, but it's, for example, the primary would change, but the terms wouldn't change. You could have different porosity phi or velocity or diffusion dispersion coefficient for different chemical species, but the term itself wouldn't change. And then the last term is, is new, right? It's, it's, a, it's a reaction term. So it will take into account essentially um, different types, the rates of different types of reactions that this species I is involved in. And you think about how fast these different reactions will change the concentration of species I. And the, of course, this I need to be written for 1 to NP, which is a number of primary species. So you need to write, for this system, seven different equations to solve. But then on top of that, you have, again, you have this number of um, secondary species you will need to solve for in the form of algebraic um, relationships. So how does this Rij look like? This is, these are term different from the previous AD equations that without this term. Um, now here this I is a rect term, so you have that. So for this um, R, it need to be If we think about this um, particular I, let's say this, let's make this I is potassium, right? So for potassium means this system, you, you, you can think about two reactions involved in. One is that it, uh, the, the K felt by dissolving out to release out calcium, right? Um, and then it comes out and it, it, it goes. So essentially, actually one reaction. So, so it'd be just K felt by dissolving out. So if it's K, then you would just have this rate um, and then you follow TST rate law, right? So you have probably this complicated KH plus, uh, dependence on H plus, whatever term, empirical numbers, K, H2O, and then A water, plus K, OH minus, and then activity OH minus, some empirical exponent here as well. These are the rate law part, early part that depends on pH. But then you again, you have surface area, and the last term will be one minus IAP over KEQ. Again, is how fast this is um, close to equilibrium or, or far away from equilibrium. So that's the general form of reaction rate law. So when we solve this, because this term will be put in there, so so this this is, is going to be a complicated term. But also, if you think about, for example, uh, species like aluminum or silica, then they are actually involved in two different reactions. One is K felt by dissolving out to release these, but a kaolinite also precipitated out. So there's one source reaction term and RI term, and the other would be a, a sink term for um, kaolinite precipitated out. So it's a sink for aluminum or silica. So we solve all these equations, and what do we come up with is all these CI as a function of time and space, right? So you have x versus. Essentially, once we know all the parameters, initial conditions, boundary condition, what water comes in, what water come out at the beginning, what's the pore water composition in the, um, in the rock and all that, this will give us this distribution of concentration and functional time and space. And over geological time, when this change line, when I say geological time, I mean at least thousands of years, thousands or ten thousand or close to a million years, things like that. So over this time scale, you would have these things keep on changing, and then the rock becomes soil, property of the process media change, you have porosity increase typically, 
um, and you have also permeability change because the water, the, re the, the resistance of this process media to water become lower and lower, so you have permeability increase as well. So this will be the chemical weathering over long term. Over short term, it's obviously the reaction change chem or water chemistry. But I want to, at the last part of it, I want to mention a little bit about the dimensionless number in from the mass point of view, how these would change, um, how we analyze these systems. So last time when we talk about this equation of AD without the reaction term, we talk about the PE or Peclin number, which is the tau um, advection. It's a tau diffusion dispersion over tau advection. Tau is a time scale, right? So the time scale of diffusion of and dispersion, which is L square over D, right? So it's the length of this column. Over diffusion, because that's the time scale for diff diffusion dispersion divided by how time, if I do it this way, times one over tau A, which is the um, opposite of length over advection. So you would have B, L, right? So that cancels out. It becomes L, V over D. And so that's the packing number that we talked about before. So this term essentially compare the relative magnitude of advection versus uh, uh, diffusion dispersion, which one is dominant under fast flow or slow conditions, right? But then because we have the reaction term, we have two more um, dimension lum uh, dimensionless number we call dem color number. So the first dem, because think about it, we have two transport process. One is diffusion uh, dispersion, other is advection. So the first one is comparing the time scale of reaction, the relative time scale of advection to the relative time scale of reaction. And in that case, again, tau A will be the same as L over V. But then you'll be, this is over tau reaction. For reaction, we are thinking about how much uh, things can dissolve and eventually reach equilibrium. So it, you would have um, volume, total bulk volume times porosity, which is how much space you have, a pore space you have that can hold water. So that's a water volume times the maximum concentration that you can dissolve in out, um, divided by the rate constant as the maximum, so K times A, right? So this would be essentially the, the reaction time, the characteristic time for reaction. And you, you, can, you can, and in notes I have simplified this and you can have that, you can look at these. Uh, for the second dem curl number, you will be comparing the time scale of diffusion dispersion over tau r. And again, this will be going back to L square over D divided by the same thing, because the resurrection term would be the same. So if you think about, um, we typically talk about under fast reaction system, fast compared to transport versus uh, when you have very slow reaction system. So when you have very fast reaction system, the system tend to reach equilibrium quickly. Um, and we it tend to be transport controlled. It's, it will be determined by the bottleneck of the all processes, which means it's going to be transport controlled. If the reaction is actually f um, slower, then so you will see like by this analysis, you, you will be able to tell how the system would behave, whether it's transport controlled or, or surface reaction controlled and how these, they will be changing over distant time will give us some kind of grouping analysis that we can do. So I'm going to end here. Um, you can go back and look at notes and this, 
I went through pretty fast. So um, look at notes we have, do some homework, and you will realize these analysis will really help you to understand how things are different under different conditions.